we're checking out a Glary semi-hollow Tele style guitar. This is the most expensive Glary that they make at about $120 is what I saw. And I wanted to do this video for a ton of reasons. And one of them was when I did other videos about the Glaries, there were so many questions and I thought this would be a great video to answer every question that I was presented with in the last few videos. So what we're gonna talk about in today's video is what do you need to make this guitar playable? Is it cut, does it come out of the box that way or do you need to put a lot of work into it? What is that work you need to do to get it at a playing level? So the first thing I wanna talk about is this guitar, when I pulled it out of the box, had quite a few issues to start with. And those issues were like a lot of the other guitars that I had seen, where it had fret sprout, the frets were sticking out on the fretboard, um, the frets were a little bit grungy, so they weren't very polished, so that had to be corrected. It had a couple dead spots, but very light. In other words, if you were a beginner and you were staying in the cowboy chord section of the neck, um, I don't think you would discover any of the problems on this guitar for quite a while. So if you're a beginner, I think you'd been fine. The action on this guitar was extremely high. Now the strings were loose, and so tightening down, actually didn't improve it, <laughs> it made it worse. And the reason the action was high was because the truss rod had no, uh, it wasn't tightened at all, so it was just perfectly loose. So it was uh, two full turns on the truss rod, corrected most of that, and then lowering the saddles on the bridge uh, definitely helped the rest of the way to get the action to more of a playable state. Now, things I had to do was I went through the fretboard and I checked all the spots that were high and I found a couple dead spots or a couple high frets, I should say. And I was able to tap a couple of them in with a hammer because it was easy to see because what happened was that the fretboard had dried out and when it was dry, it shrank and these frets kind of lifted a little bit. So I was able to tap down all the frets, but one fret. And that one fret, just uh, once I tapped it down, it still didn't help. So I went ahead and leveled and crowned that at the same time using my crowning file, which works. We just take a little bit of material off until it doesn't rock anymore. And then at that point, I went ahead and polished uh, all the frets, including correcting the fret sprout. So I went ahead and took care of the fret sprout as well uh, using a angled file and that helped. Then I went ahead and polished all the frets with steel wool just to make sure that they felt really well and of course hydrated the fretboard. I also checked the nut and the nut had a couple slots in it that were not deep enough but nothing on the nut was bad enough to where if you were a beginner or intermediate level intermediate beginner and you're just trying to find an affordable guitar that would hinder you. I would also had to lock down the tuning keys they were a little bit loose so that all had to be addressed and one of the things I've said in all the videos about the Glaries was the back of the neck. Uh, what happened was it's always very rough. This one wasn't as rough. So what I did is I took some steel wool and I just basically sanded the back of the neck until it became glossy and the neck feels fantastic. So if that sounds like a lot of work, well, then this is not the guitar for you. This guitar is priced at a point where they're basically giving you something that is very raw and it needs work. And like I said, if you're an absolute beginner on a serious budget, some of these features you wouldn't notice that were wrong or defective, um, but I think any other player would notice them right away. Once I did all of that, there was nothing to do with the body. The body came out great. It looks great. The electronics all work as they should, although obviously inexpensive, they are fine. Something else to note is uh, a question I get all the time is, can you take the neck off this and put a aftermarket fender neck on it? And the truth is no, even though uh, it looks very standard, these do not line up. So you would have to uh, drill new holes in a fender neck and I don't even know if it would fit in that pocket. So you'd have to try that on your own. I have not experimented with it, nor do I want to. Uh, Cause again, I like these Glaries for just kind of working on, working on fret work, working on modifications, using it as a kind of a kick around guitar. And I don't want to really use its parts on any other guitars because again, none of these parts are of such a high quality that you would want to put that on any other guitar. So let's get into the sounds. That's something that, that should be fun. And uh, we're gonna start with the bridge pickup. And it sounds great. It's got a lot of tw uh, telly twang and punch to it. Up 
great. And while I'm a little cleaned up with the volume backed off, let's go to that middle position. Let's go to that neck position. And again, we're just rolling the volume back off a little bit. And if you go and turn that gain back up on the neck pickup, you're gonna get a warmer, fuller kind of sound. What's also impressive on this particular one was how nice it looks. I mean, it really looks good. From afar, it looks like uh, a beautiful, more ex much more expensive looking guitar than when it when you get up on close on it. Now, a lot of the fit and finish problems are not in the body. The body looks great. One of the things that you guys have mentioned many times over is that you don't like uh, that on the Tele version of the Glaries, the pick guard doesn't line up with the bridge. I agree. It's not an, uh, a look I like either. I don't understand why they don't fix that. Uh, it makes no sense whatsoever. This one, I think its appeal, and this is why I was interested in it, is for someone who's always wanted like the semi-hollow telly and uh, wanted to experiment with things, like experiment with pickups, experiment with all kinds of components and parts, and uh, maybe work on guitars and do fret work. This would be a great guitar for that at about $120. Now, you have to understand, if that's not something you're interested in doing, I don't think this is for you, because if you factor in the, what it costs just to get some basic tools to do the, the, uh, the files for the frets, uh, a file for the nut, uh, a couple other adjustment tools, the price of those tools, even inexpensive ones on amazon.com, uh, those tools and this guitar, you could much buy a much nicer guitar used, uh, much less even new, but definitely used, and, and have a nice guitar. This is for, like I said, someone who's thinking about modding a guitar, getting different types of guitars, like I said, Strat, a Tele, the Thin Line Tele, uh, something different and playing with it, especially this one where it's the Tele pickup and the humbucker in the neck. Something else worth noting is that underneath the pickguard, the hole is routed big enough for pretty much any style of pickup, everything from a P99, P90 on, you could put in there so there's no issues. So I preview my videos to my patrons first and then I take and address their questions they had. And one of the questions that a patron had was, what would it cost for me to do the work that I showed you earlier in this video. So I'm going to go through that. Of course, keep in mind that depending on where you live on the planet Earth, the prices will vary. But I currently charge $80 for a setup that would entail up to four frets being dressed or leveled, I should say. So what that means is as long as I'm not crown and leveling all the, the frets, that's still considered a setup. That's what I consider a setup. So a setup would entail me making sure that those frets, which in this case, there was three of them. So I only had to tap two down and level one. I would also include the intonation and making sure the action is set. Now, what's not included in that was this guitar had a fret dress issue, which in other words, they had they had sprouted and they need to be rolled off a little bit. Now, adding that to the setup would be additional $20. So I'm at $100 is what I would charge you. If I had to work on the nut, that would be an additional charge. In this case, the nut was fine, but I wanted to make sure that the slots were just smoothed out and cut correctly. So that would not be an additional charge. That would be considered part of the setup. But if I had to cut the nut or do anything to replace the nut, that would be additional charge. So we're still at $100. But it let's say you did the work yourself. I looked it up. All the tools you saw in this video, you could buy on Amazon for about $67. Although I got to tell you, I tried these really inexpensive $6 uh, uh, fret files just for this video, and I absolutely hated them. But I understand if that's what you have, that's what you have. Fret files cost about $100. So I can understand $6 ones will get the job kind of done. But you can see it where I got frustrated and just went back to my real files. And again, I'm not cutting the nut. I'm just smoothing out the slots a little bit. Now, if you buy tools from Studio 
Stu Mac or Crimson Guitars or any uh, kind of high-end luthery website, you're going to be spending at least $150 for these same types of tools. However, those tools will last you a long time, but you can see it brings the cost of the guitar almost to $300. But the only advantage is you would have $300 spent into a guitar and then have tools to show for it. So I just wanted to let you know the options. Again, just more information for you to make decisions with. Like I said, if that uh, work doesn't appeal to you, I don't know if I would suggest it to you, but I wanted to show it to you because of the fact that uh, I was curious to see how this model laid out in their series, because this is pretty much, like I said, the most expensive one. On that note, I hope that was insightful. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I wanna thank you so much for your time today. Until the next time, know your gear. Uh -huh.